very large delay between the uh, the chat, the stream that comes out, by the way, and everything else that's going on. So if I if I miss some things, I know there's a big delay. My bad. I'll just try to get to them when I can. So welcome back to the Unreal Press Podcast. My name is Miles McNaughton. Tonight we're going to do a uh, little writing stream. Uh, there's a press called Morian Press uh, that I was told about by my good friend James Craig. And what the Morian Press does is they're working on an anthology. Uh, this is going to be a uh, like a fantasy esque anthology. So they put out a request for a six thousand word short story, uh, less than that. Uh, has a little bit of magic and a uh, particular focus on the cost or price of using it is their uh, requirement. So we're gonna just kind of draft out a couple ideas. Uh, I'm gonna work out maybe write five eh, hundred ish words or so. Uh, just try to just try to have a good time with it. Um, and then when I feel like I've had enough, we'll we'll call it a stream. Uh, this is my first time streaming on YouTube. Normally I stream on Twitch, where the delay is nearly zero, but we decided to try YouTube tonight. What do I write? I primarily write, uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to think of what I don't write actually. So, uh, Unreal Press Podcast does anthologies, and recently we did an anthology submission request for a horror anthology. So that was my first time writing horror. I guess you could consider that the only genre I don't particularly write in. Uh, if you don't know about the Unreal Press podcast, we're a group of of authors focused on transgressive fiction, uh, internet culture, and anything for Chan that's actually good. We've got a lot of good authors here. Uh, you can find one of our more prolific authors, James Craik, on his Twitter page. You can also find his book, Ship of Fools, uh, Bastion, Faceless. Uh, you can also... If you want to read his stuff for free, you can find it Undying Emperor on Royal Road, which uh, is quite good, in my opinion. And uh, we've also got a couple other writers whose names are escaping me at the moment, but we just put out a new anthology about the stories of the Orient, so you're more than welcome to go and take a look at that. Just look for the Islamic Good Bazaar and other stories. Uh, one of our affiliates, uh, not affiliated with the podcast, but one of our more prominent members as well. His name is uh, Slip. He runs Tookie's Magazine, which is a Substack magazine that you can uh, take a look at. And uh, yeah, those are those are some of our uh, some of our people that come and hang out. You're more than welcome to join our Discord server as well. When this VOD goes up, that'll have a link to the to the Discord in the description. And yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna uh, get to writing. Uh, I'm gonna tweak a few things on the streaming side, and we'll just uh, we'll just hop right into it. Okay, dope. All right, let's get some let's get some work done tonight. So, uh, so we got six thousand words roughly. It'll probably be about five thousand words. Uh, I'll pop in on the YouTube channel on occasion and take a look at it as well. Uh, an element of magic and particularly focus on the cost and price of using it. So we've got a couple ideas kind of brewing right now. Uh, it's obviously something you probably could be literary with. Uh, on second thought, let's go take a look at the actual submissions page. Let's see if I can pull that up real quick. Just give me just a second. All right, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Browser. Okay. Okay. bigger, put it in the middle. Uh, 
Okay, I guess it's I guess that's about as far as we're getting. Okay, we'll scroll down a little bit. All right, the submissions open now through March thirty first, twenty twenty three. Payment for poems is ten dollars. Payment for stories accepted is words. Now this is the only thing that's really here, right? Must be previously unpublished. Element of magic. Uh, focus on the cost. Sacrifice one pays or gains to uses it. So that's really not so hard. That's that's pretty feasible. Hmm. I'm still learning how to use OBS, so this is a uh, this is something new to me. We'll go ahead and get rid of this. We won't need this right now. Okay. So let's 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 brainstorm some ideas for this. All right. Element of magic, particular focus. So, uh, some obvious things are like losing life, right? Uh, you could also say lose something that's not really as tangible, maybe joy, happiness, uh, money. <laughs> You lose money. Hmm. How about uh, other people can lose their life, right? So you lose life. Other people lose lose life. Hmm. What if there's a certain sacrifice uh, somebody would be willing to make? Maybe you could lose memory. I see we've got Tookie's Mag in the chat. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, we've got a we've got a little bit of fun going on tonight. Uh, if this helps anybody, by the way, uh, get some of their get some of their homework done. So, if if that helps anybody, by all means, you're you're welcome to to pick some ideas. Um, no idea is ever truly original, and every original idea can just be redone in a different way. So, feel free. Looks like I lost the audio as well for Venice Classic Radio. I'm gonna. Let me give it a refresh here. There we go. That should that should be there we go. There's the audio. Looks like it just disappeared for a second. All right, back to it. So, <clears throat> lose life, lose joy, lose other other people lose life, lose memory. This is gonna be weird. I'm gonna think of Magic the Gathering stuff, actually, because everything in Magic you sort of have to pay a price for, right? So like for green, you need to pay a lot of mana. Uh, obviously in black, you pay life. Um, in white, I guess you really pay with tempo. Like your tempo is a lot, you have to slow the game down a lot to have a chance to win. You can pay, play aggressive with white, but... Uh, Red, you uh, you pay with uh, pay with life and card advantage, right? So you you mill you mill through your cards really fast. I'm, these are just things I'm trying to think of in order to uh, get some ideas flowing. And blue, you you really pay uh, you pay threats, right? So you don't have many large threats. So the advantage there, oh, let's see if there's anything I can work with. The obvious one, right, is just pay life. Every, 
everyone and their mom who submits to this is going to have some sort of like, oh, he's at the end of his rope. He's paying his whole life. He's doing, you know, everyone's going to write a story like that. If you're submitting to a story uh, press like this, they're going to see so many goddamn submissions that are like that, that it's almost not worth writing one yourself, right? You could be unique, I suppose. You could, you could, you could make your own. Uh, that's that's my plan, really, is to just make something that's uh, different from everybody else. The obvious choice, obviously, is oh, you lose life by uh, by paying with your powers. I'm I'm trying to find something a little more tangible. I'm really kind of digging the idea that you lose memory, like you have memories that you can't quite hold on to, and they just sort of disappear over time. Tap the, mu tap the music down just a hair. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of like lose memory. So let's, uh, let's see. So lose memory. That's, that's the cost of using the power. But let's be more specific. You're not losing memory, you're losing memories. So what would be so significant that you'd be willing to throw away memories for? Um, maybe you have a dream you want to achieve. It's obvious. Uh, let's be more specific. How about, uh, let's do fighting tournaments. Everyone likes fighting tournaments. Uh, you want to be the very best. <laughs> no, 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 we can't write that. That's copyright. You want to be the champ. You want to be the champ, right? Uh, you've been training. You've trained. Your whole life for it. Uh, that kind of implies you're always losing your memories. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's fix this up then. So, let's say you lose short-term memories first then long term after the long use there's a thought okay so we start with the idea that uh, yeah yeah okay so we start with the idea that we're working on um working on borrowed time okay so this allows our this allows our fighter to uh, basically use use his short-term memories as leverage right and then uh, he never uses his long-term but this is what we're going to break for him. We're going to make him want to win so bad that he starts using his long-term memories. So at the end, uh, by the end, he has no memory of what he's fighting for or why. Just that he has to keep going. Why not? Kind of sad, isn't it? But could make for a pretty good story get this guy who uh, ends up having everything and then at the end he has nothing. I think that's something that uh, I think that's something that these Morian people would not have seen before. And when you do when you do something again that's unique and different, I think people respond to that really well. Okay. So we've got our idea here. We can we can lose basically this junk. We don't care about this junk anymore. Uh, these are just limitations. We don't care about this either. All right. Uh, I very rarely plot, but because this is a short story and I can't really wax as poetical as I should, we have to do a couple of things. One, smartly establish his power. Two, 
show his power in action, which also begs the question, what is his power? It has to be something that's great but terrible. And its consequences. Show us power in action and its consequences. Okie doke. Okay. Hmm. Uh, we can show... We can show his own dilemma. Show his resolve. Allow him to break himself and close it out. It's not terrible, I guess, for a first little draft. Uh, you're more than welcome to throw in ideas. It just depends on how I see them. Uh, you're probably not going to hear this message for about a minute or so anyways. Uh, but any ideas are good ideas. And I pop in and check the chat on occasion. So if you've got ideas, uh, air them out. I'll send a message as well. All right, so what would, let's see. So well, obviously if this is gonna be, uh, if he's gonna be a fighter of some sort, the obvious thing would be a tournament. So we can have someone job in the first round. Job in the first round. Uh, but he can't remember where his locker is. Uh, it's probably pretty light, I suppose. That's an idea. Takes memories from other people and destroys his at the same time. He binds them to throw them out. I like the idea. Um, I'm wondering if... <clears throat> Let me think. So if you've got somebody who is taking memories from other people as well... Uh, that could be really nice, but only if the two people have an established relationship with each other. Otherwise, you've just got some random person who happens to be a casualty, right? So a good closer, for example, would be that he can use the vampire power uh, to power himself, but he chooses not to because it's devastating or whatever. And let's say he fights like a big rival at the end. Uh, this is probably spanning a little too deep for a story this short. But at, he would fight his rival at the end and then he'd be so desperate to win and he'd want to win so badly that he keeps taking uh, memories until even the memory of their rivalry is gone. That could be really nice. I just don't know if, I don't know if there's enough space, even 6,000 words to fit all of that into one. Yeah. I'm kind of feeling the the combat plot right now. Uh, I don't particularly have disagreements with... What do you call it? Um, I don't have disagreements with writing like a lit RPG or like a, like a smash and fantasy. But writing action sequences is not only a test of uh, patience and determination... But it just is not as interesting in literature as it is in a visual medium like an anime, right? Good lord, we're 
20 minutes into this and I've barely written a word. So let's 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 redraft this. Uh, by the way, uh, if we don't end up writing a single word tonight of the actual story, that's kind of a downer. But I'd rather have a very clear idea of what I want to write than write 3,000 words of throat clearing until I find the the thread of the story and then I have to change it all later. So this is this is not so bad. We're doing okay. All right, so. Let's think of some other ideas. We know that the cost of using the power is that you lose, you lose your memories. So, but first let's establish what exactly is his power. What's his power, right? Because we don't want to forget, it's not the fact that he loses memories that's his power. It, that's a consequence of him using it. Uh... So his memories, and possibly, possibly the memories of others are the fuel. Memories and possibly memories of others are his fuel. So do we want like a physical augmentation? Do we want psychic power? These are the obvious ones, right? Telekinesis, I suppose. <laughs> What's something else that's a little more unique? Super speed. That could be interesting. Super speed could be interesting. Here's why. If we have the ability to go really fast at the cost of memories, what happens if you arrive in a place and you don't remember why you're there? If you arrive in, in a place that, that you don't remember why you got there in the first place, I mean, think about how frustrating that is. And what's worse, think about knowing that you arrive in a place like that and knowing that you had to do something important, but you can't remember what it is. That could make for some great character drama. Some truly great character drama, I think. And I love writing about super speed. I could write about super speed all day long. Hmm. Let's do... Let's try that first. Okay. Super speed. So, uh, arrives in places, but can't remember why. That's an easy one, right? You can open up. You can open up a story with that. You know, John Smith shows up to X, but can't remember what he ran there for. But there's more elegant ways to do this. Sure. What other options? Uh, maybe his power is more ethereal. Maybe he can... It doesn't have to be like a forcible power, right? What are some other lighter ones? Walk through walls is too simple. Uh, teleport. That's a that's probably a that's probably even better than super speed. Because imagine if you're being chased by uh, an enemy. Ooh, okay. Let's let's follow this. Teleport. Chased by an enemy. This is kind of like uh, if you've ever seen the movie. Is it Jumper or Jump? One of those two. You're being chased by an enemy, so you teleport away. Let's say there's limitations on that. Uh, such as you can't jump if you're being shocked or your heart rate is too high. But in teleporting, lose your memory of who was chasing you, where, and why. 
we're kind of a little off track here because I know what they really are aiming for. They want the, and when I say they, I mean Morian Press. They want the draw of the hero is self-sacrificing, uh, making great sacrifice. They want that that big climax at the end, right? Heh, very very funny, <laughs> very funny. I just saw that that message on YouTube. I I won't say it because. It'll get our esteemed press demonetized. So. Chasing you where and why. Hmm. Alright. I'm going to do a side turn here. That's our keyword. They're really looking for a story about ambition and willpower. If we could give them a story like that, that happens to have the the power stuff in it, then it's probably a fancy token. Let's get rid of this. We don't need this anymore. So we want ambition and willpower. Uh, let's see. We can get rid of this, too. This is old. Uh, we can get rid of this, too. That's old. There we go. Better. Hmm. Hmm. Ambition and willpower. This is where it's tough. Because we want to try to wrap the Morian prompt into something that has that ambition and willpower but something that's novel some would say why don't you just shut the hell up and write at this point and i technically agree i do overthink things pretty heavily but there's got to be something there's got to be a better way to write this no These kind of prompts I'm sometimes just not good at because I get up in my own head about it. What's the obvious choice here? Character can call up big explosion at the cost of his own life. No, John Smith. Don't do it. Your heart. Fight for my friends. Right, that's the that's the obvious one. I don't like that. It's pedestrian. Why would I want to write something pedestrian?
super strength maybe. What would he lose for super strength? Life is obviously always the obvious choice. That has the highest stakes, right? Uh, life. The problem, the problem is that this, this prompt, I feel, even though it's a, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't see this until now, but I, I agree with you, Toki. With a 6,000 word limit, it's not like you can write a very fleshed out novelette where you can really get into the nitty gritty of the ups and downs of the the difficulties of this uh, of this power that this person has. You have to convey it all fast and interesting, and it has to hit. Again, my comp my primary complaint with this is that it it doesn't allow. The solution is already there. You know, it's like solving a textbook problem. Well, what do you what are you gonna write about, son? What what could the hero possibly sacrifice? Uh, comes at a great sacrifice as well. Obviously, his own life. An interesting inversion, maybe his friends' lives. Like, let's say he's got a he's got a team of groupies that he really likes, but every time he uses a specific power the groupies kick the bucket instead or lose their lives so he's got like this uh he's got like this cabal of uh groupies who are basically like big life tanks and every time he uses his power they lose a little of theirs lost a lot of friends along the way right now he's losing the one groupie he's really in love with. So this has a lot of... This has a lot of good ideas to it. You, you obviously answer the prompt. You've got the life-sacrificing uh, thing. Because that... Uh, it doesn't have to be. But I feel like that's what Morian wants. And that's probably what Morian's going to get from almost everybody is, you know, the anime tier. I'm sacrificing myself for my friends. I think anything lighter than that, you probably could write effectively, but shoo buddy, that, that would not be easy. We don't always go for what's easy, by the way. But I like this because he's, he's choosing when to use his power and he has people who believe in him so much that they're willing to sacrifice their own life in order to further his causes and his ideals. So here we have a couple of good angles, right? We've got uh, the moral responsibility of the hero. Uh, maybe he's not responsible. He sees the groupies as just life tanks throwing themselves themselves away now maybe the groupies this comes from uh, apocrypha maybe the groupies are just homunculus i oh, spelled it wrong they're just homunculus who are built to be life tanks it removes a little of the agency for the guy because then he doesn't have to worry about whether this person has like a life ahead of them or not. The alternative is like maybe they're just a bunch of cancer patients and he's just sucking out the, the last bits of straw. Because nobody would... I mean, you'd have to be actually lunatic in order to be like, you know what, I'm going to sign up for that hero. You know, the guy who uh, sucks people's lives away in order to use his strength. You'd have to be an actual lunatic to do that. I don't, and as as good as that would probably be, I don't find it believable enough to turn into a story. So it's not gonna do that. 
We'll go with the homunculus angle for now. Let's chase this a little bit. Okay, so... He sees... Okay. The groupies... Yeah, there you go. He sees the groupies as life tanks. Um, because... The groupies are just ones who are built to be life tanks. However... Hmm... Maybe there's a lull where he doesn't have to use his power and gets to spend time with a specific Monculus who is next on the chopping block. So if we're going to go for this angle with the story, it's actually not going to be very action oriented. The whole focus of the story is going to be on the consequences of using his his great power. No? If we're worried about the consequences of him using his great power, then... Then there won't be a lot of action, right? There may be a, it's like, let's say it's an introduction fight scene. Uh, then we can do a pseudo combat. Uh, we don't want to get too philosophical on this. We want to keep the action clipping along pretty highly. Maybe he offhandedly says something to the homunculus. Maybe he sees something the homunculus is doing and asks them, what the heck? Los potentiales, you know? So then he sees the homunculus, uh, forms a bond, begins to question his own actions. then is thrown into a situation where he has to make the choice. Okay. We can get rid of this. Okay. So he has to make the choice. We obviously know that the choice is going to be uh, that he sacrifices the homunculus in order to use his powers, right? But now his mentality is different. Now he values life. It feels kind of kitschy. Uh, it feels too moralistic, you know, kind of too, kind of a little whiny. Pretty predictable too. So you, you know, you've got you got the you got the brash hero who comes to understand humanity and etc. And then he humbles himself. 
like this. I mean, how many how many freaking stories do you think there are that's just like this? There's so many of them. Mm -mm. I mean, there's nothing new under the sun, right? It's part execution, part theory, part what the heck am I thinking right now? Hmm. I think I'm going to take a couple of seconds to just listen to some music because I'm kind of stumped. Uh, I'm just going to let the Venice Classic Radio play for a little bit while I uh, think of a, one or two ideas. And um, yeah, I'll come back probably in about a minute or so. I just, I just really have to zen out. I'm kind of stuck on this. Okay, so is it really a bad thing that this is how the hero is? Is it really so bad? Like, is the, tr is the trope so bad that it's not worth using is the question, right? It doesn't have to be a moralistic tale. Uh, well, the problem is it's predictable. There's also the inversion that he doesn't sacrifice the homunculus and is dangerously hurt or something and the homunculus is killed. I mean, I feel like this had such promise, but it really just is uh, running up into walls. Nuts. Okay, let's go back to this. So he, he has a cabal of... Uh, cabal's not the right word. He's basically got a bunch of life tanks that he carries around as like a miniature squad army. And then anytime he wants to use his power, he's like, hey, thanks. Sucks the power out of them and then they just go lifeless on the ground. You know. The homunculus don't care because that's what they're built for. But that doesn't stop them from wanting to have other things. You know. Ugh, I'm drawing so much from Apocrypha right now. Fate, of, fate Apocrypha, not the uh, religious Apocrypha.
Uh, this is tough. I think uh, less, uh, less meticulous writers probably would have had a lot of different ideas right now. And they probably would have started on a lot of different ideas right now. I mean, when you think about it, really, the whole thing, the whole idea with the uh, with the press, is really it's a practice. It's practice and it's a submission. But every submission technically is its own practice. Every novel you write is just practice for writing your better next novel. So, in some some circles, I guess you wouldn't really need to be thinking about this as hard as I am right now. But I'm also short on uh, short on ideas, so. Hmm. All right, once again, ambition and willpower. That's the, that's the idea that we want to sell, that this, that this hero, uh, he may or may not have the willpower to carry out what is absolutely necessary at the end. I mean, there's something still here with this. It's just hard to piece it out. He could fall in love with one of the homunculus. That's an easy out. But then, uh... What does he do? Where does he go with it? So he falls in love, so what? He's like, okay, this one's not going to, uh become a life tank. Would the other homunculus think it's fair? Probably not. They'd probably attack her, dismantle her. What would he then sacrifice in order to keep her safe? If his power has a has a blow up limit, that could be an interesting climax. Uh, has to make the choice. So let's 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 go back to this. Uh, protects homunculus from becoming the next life tank. Shuffles it on down the line. Why does she get special treatment? And the reason I have this is because I'm not 100% sold that the uh, gender of the homunculus has to be male or female. Just like the hero could be male or female. I'm obviously male, so I'm leaning male, but it could be interesting to put this from a female's perspective as well. That's a whole different dynamic. We'll, fig we'll figure that out a little bit later. Uh, we can have some jealousy show up. We don't want to get too nutso with this, so this has to be like the middle of the story which means this bond has to happen fast oh 3,000 words just is not going to be enough maybe 4,000 uh no well 4,000 is probably close enough because then they can have their whole jealousy scene and then by the 5,000th word uh they're trying to tear her apart Hero, let's say, okay, now this, you know, hero has to make a choice, live or die, uh, save the girl, or let them take her. Obviously, if he saves the girl, he overloads his own power reserves.
That could be another drawback, I suppose. Let's them take her. Loses the love he found. And still has to deal with the puppy like this. Hmm. Okay. I think there's something there's something kind of brewing here. Uh, but I think it's too ambitious for this the length that we have. Uh, six thousand words, maybe not. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know unless you were to write this entire thing to your satisfaction, regardless of word count, and then try to pull it back. If this ends up being ten thousand words, it's you're not gonna have enough space to uh, to to whittle it down. But if it's at like eight or even seven and a half, you could probably whittle it down. Uh, the easy way to whittle a lot of this down... Nah, let's get rid of this. The easy way to whittle this down, in my opinion, is to uh, use Omniscience. Uh, and then we can use Limited to show the developing feelings. So, we'll have to kind of hybridize this a little bit in terms of the actual craft. Um, so, you'll want to do limited for their interactions. Uh, and then you want to use Omniscient for um, running the progress along. This is a little bit of a cheat code. Uh, it's nothing that's particularly novel or new. It's, it's as simple as you establish that there's a growing relationship between two people, and then basically you montage the rest. Or montage to a certain point. Uh, you know, you don't have to show them having every single freaking conversation that builds up their relationship over, uh, let's say the homunculus lives for three years. You can fall in love with someone in a month, fall in love with someone with a, within a day or a week. So we don't need to show them every single minute together, but little things like, you know, Let's say the homunculus are supposed to do, um, not, uh, like chores or, 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 uh, let's say he's rich and he needs someone to, like, run errands for him. But when she runs errands for him, it's not like a homunculus is, like, just some random off-the-shelf homunculus is bringing him his groceries. It's like, oh, my girl went and got groceries for me. You know, she brought them specifically for me. So the way he views it through his through his lens of how he sees this uh, this homunculus and their relationship growing uh, really starts to characterize those important bits. Grocery shopping. I'm still gonna leave. Blah. Come on, this loses the love found. Overloads on power reserves, saves the love interest. I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling like I really want to try going for the uh, female hero perspective for this. But I don't... It's not like I don't think I have the chops for this, because I, I very much do. But I think the dynamic of this story is going to be extremely different. If you've got a heroic, patriarchal male character in this position, 
the natural progression of the story is that he falls in love with the girl, right? The girl is, uh, the girl is his gift. The girl is a gift to him, right? Uh, I don't pretend to fully understand the female point of view, but I know it's not like that when it's the other way around. So I think crafting that sort of story could be, could be a test and a challenge. And would the homunculus have, if the homunculus was male, would he have the same instincts for protection? Um, would the female hero have the same instincts for protection as well? It's, I mean, I, I, I don't know. As a male, you want to protect the gifts that you're given, right? Especially if it's, if it's a female that's very important in your life. I think, from my point of view, it's easiest to make the hero a male. But it would be so interesting to make this a female hero and a male homunculus. But it would have to, it would have to be executed perfectly. Because if it wasn't, then it would just feel uh, not cliche, but it would feel like it came off of TV tropes. It wouldn't feel real. It wouldn't feel like a story. It would just feel like a collection of crap. And I'm really not in the business of writing crap. That's not entirely true. I write a lot of crap. <laughs> okay, so I think we're sort of settling in on this homunculus idea. So the drawback of the power, obviously, is... Okay, maybe he can't, maybe he can't shuffle the life tanks around. Though let's say their number is tied to, I don't know, let's say if he's a cybernetic, whatever cybernetic tank is on his arm. Uh, and if he does, as long as he doesn't shoot that cybernetic tank, it doesn't use the life force of that homunculus. Okay, okay, I can kind of go with that. They could be his backup squad. Let's say they've got their own rifles. Uh, they've got their own tactics. You know, and then he's like, "Oh crap, we got a, we got a zombie infestation, or uh, enemies inbound. I got to nuke them with one of my life jars that only I can use." It's like cool, homunculus twenty two nineteen taking the L, and then they just drop him. Someone else picks someone some, someone else picks up their rifle, right, and starts shooting again. <sighs> Alright. We're getting closer. This is kinda like refining. We're getting we're getting the uh we've got a fat lump of coal right now. And the inside is a good diamond, and we're kinda dusting it off a little bit. I've got about a month and three or four weeks to write this. At a thousand words a day, this shouldn't be too ha this shouldn't be too hard. I just need to have an extremely clear picture of where this is going. The important part is having the extremely clear picture. Because I can write the crap out of uh, something that's plotted in an outline. Anybody can. That's that's the actual easy part. Making it sound nice, doing some edits. You know, that that's when I like to really kind of take my time and massage things to get them right, but... Okay, so... We're going to use this as our as our sort of outline draft. Um, let's let's go back and figure out what his power is. So what, what does he use? What's the setting? 
What does he use in order to uh, generate his power? Where Where is he using it for? Why is he using it? These are all things. So where would we find homunculus, right? Homunculus would be in a magic setting, a cyberpunk setting. Uh, I guess in that case they would be more. Uh, they they would be more like, not golems, but they'd be like I guess androids of sort. Uh, you could do a. Biblical is not quite the right word, but we'll use it. Biblical setting. It's like clay men, golems, etc. I don't think we'll end up using this, though. So we've got magic or cyberpunk. Obviously, he wants to... Uh, remember, Moria, Morian's thing is about... Uh, let's go back and read it. I closed it because I'm daft. Morian submissions. There we go. Must have an element of magic, power, spells, etc., and have a particular focus on the cost, price, sacrifice, etc., that one gain that one pays to use them. Okay, so we're going to definitely want it to be a power, which means it probably can't be cyberpunk, so we're going to go with a magic setting. It could be contemporary. It doesn't have to be medieval. This is becoming more and more like Fate Grand Apocrypha. Or Fate Apocrypha. There's no grand. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I like... The contemporary setting so we'll do a contemporary setting the mage war is pretty obvious this is just ripping off apocrypha at this point but let's do something that's not so obvious when would he need to use magic and use it recklessly and have a big set of homunculus there to help him. War is the obvious. Let's put, let's put the question down. When would the hero need a lot of homunculus life tanks and have the ability and need to use them whenever necessary? War, right? Uh, special combat team. Something that's not fighting. Let's say he needs magic power to lift heavy buildings. So maybe there's construction development industry right i think that'd be a pretty boring setting no we're not saving it right now hmm I guess that's pretty much it. You've got war, you've got construction, uh, you've got special combat. I mean, that's when you would probably think about needing to use these kinds of uh, these kinds of tools to accomplish the job.
I think one of these three is probably fine. The reason I don't want to do war is because it starts to get really close to other IPs. And I would hate to be told that I'm ripping something off. Special combat team, let's say he's doing, uh, you know, like unique, something unique, right? Unique missions that require magic and homunculus. So maybe he's like part of a part of a tactics or strike team where he's the head honcho and the homunculus come free with the plane ticket. That's probably fine. So if they come free with a plane ticket, that means he's going into zones where there is combat. They don't necessarily have to be at war, it could just be strategic areas, shifting borders, uh, areas where there's monsters. Okay. One, two, three, four. Monsters uh, spawning. Rifts of magic that need closing. Okay, there's some there's some thoughts there. Say minor mage family disputes. Ah, uh, no, we don't want to do that. Minor mage uh, mages gone rogue. Rogue, there you go. Uh, we could also do item retrieval. We're probably not going to use nearly any of these. Uh, the important thing is that we have a very clear idea of what this team does. So that way when he's thrown into a specific situation, we're like, oh, fuck, well, we know, we know what to do with this guy. That's, that's that's probably fine. So he's gonna want to start. I, I say we start him. We're gonna do the introduction fight scene. Uh, let's say a rift of magic needs to be closed, and he's part of the head team, so he's there fighting and he's there shooting down, uh, shooting down stuff with with all of his. Uh, Capabilities. He's shooting down stuff. Drawing on energy tanks for support. Uh, let's say he sees uh, Ahmonculus asking another if they're okay. Maybe laps it off. Uh, let's say later on he he asks a homunculus. Why would he ask, right? He doesn't care. What is it he sees that because figure this is he's gone on these kind of trips a hundred million times. He's probably seen homunculus help each other up after being attacked. All the time. Hmm. 
What's different this time is that one of them has a name. There we go. They're always given by numbers. Or, you know, you know, tank one, tank three, or whatever. Okay. Get called by a name. Uh, let's say later on he receives a report from that homunculus and asks her about it. Uh, starts to, uh, let's say that he considers her strange but interesting. He hadn't thought that homunculus could think of that way. Uh, let's say he, uh, maybe he starts using the name as a joke. We can montage this part, right? And starts calling her it seriously. Okay. Oh, uh, Tookie, if you're still here, I appreciate you stopping by. Um, th thanks for your uh, thanks for your input earlier on, uh, and I'm I'm glad the story seems to be finding its feet as well. It's it's uh, starting to come together a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for stopping by, my friend. We'll probably go for maybe another 10 minutes or so and, uh, and call it a night. Uh, streaming for about an hour and a half or so seems, uh, seems a pretty good way to, to go in, and I don't want to waste too many people's time. <laughs> if I can at least get this, this little, uh, outline done through, I think I can call that, call that good for tonight. Because the next time I can start working on the actual story... Or in my own time, I guess we start working on the actual story, and that's really what we're what we're trying to do here, right? Uh, let's see. Why? How? These are questions for me, really, to think about. Uh, I like to make sure that everything when I write has that nice cohesion of this makes sense, and there's not there's not like a lingering hole here. So. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's... Lost my train of thought. It starts calling it her seriously. Why? How? Because your name is a joke. Uh... Um, important. Establish that he sees them only as a resource. But doesn't talk to them because they're just homunculus. Uh, it's not, it's not that he's elitist. I mean, he is. But he's so elitist, he doesn't consider them anything but a talking resource. You know, like in those games where you've got, uh, you've got like spearmen, you know, or or swordsmen, something like that, where you have the uh, capability to just freaking stab somebody uh, but you know that you're not going to lose sleep over them if they have to get thrown into a meat grinder and just get ran the crap over because you got to protect a more important resource that's that's how he thinks of them 
in terms of chess pieces to use the terrible chess analogy they're the pawns right uh it would be it'd be weird for him to react in this way so this is something we're gonna have to find out why is he doing this never has before So we can work with the idea. Let's say that he does start doing the joke. That's fine, starts calling it seriously. Maybe for the first time he wants to learn. Uh, I think this is kind of getting off the rails actually. Maybe not. He wants to learn about them uh, because he's starting to see them as human. Uh, we're gonna put a uh, intermediate fight scene. Let's say there's a monster spawning and he instinctively uses his powers and drops a homunculus or two and realizes, you know, the big realize. <laughs> And he has that realization, right? Like, oh, hey, these are living creatures. I mean, imagine if you had a box full of, I don't know, cats, dogs. Take your pick of furry animal. And every time you wanted to, to start your car, you had to chuck one of those things into the engine while it was still alive. If you hate cats or you hate dogs, it's, that's probably perfectly fine. You'd be like, shoot, I don't care. Just throw it in the engine, turn it on, crank her up. But if you're a big cat or a big dog person, that's a problem. You're like, hey, I, you know, I'd rather walk. <laughs> I'd rather walk. I don't want to throw my, I don't want to throw Fido or Fluffy or Tinkles or whatever their freaking cat's names are nowadays into my car's engine or to make it start. So this is him realizing, oh, uh, crap. These people are, you know, shoot, well, they're people. Uh, are they? I think it's important for him to have doubts, but not to answer the question of whether or not they're people. For him to have doubts, but we don't want to answer whether they're people. Beyond the scope. Right? We don't want to get sidetracked. We don't want to get sidetracked trying to say, well, the homunculus are people and you should feel bad for them. Through their interactions in the story, we want them to be perceived as people. So it's important that we showcase them doing all the things people would normally do and showcase them as living, sentient creatures. And obviously show them suffering uh, nobly for uh, for this noble. So let's say that you know uh, they're in they're in for it. They've accepted their lot in life and do their duty with diligence and 
Solem solemnity. Uh, this doesn't make them any less human. Or even more human? I think it's a big thing to say. We can't we can't prove that this makes them more human, but it's important to show they're not soulless automatons who just get thrown away. And when we write this, we have to be extremely careful with our language. We can't just have some bland scene where they're like, okay, we're gonna go throw the bodies in a ditch now. We're gonna go bury the, uh, the dead homunculus that you used up. You know, they have to take it with a, with a degree of, uh, of seriousness. You know, when you're burying uh, someone who's very, you're very close to, it's a serious affair. You gotta figure these homunculus, they're discarded and, and uh, not probably well appreciated by the people around them, especially not the mages. So they just really have each other and that, that's all they get. That's all they get in life. Kind of a raw deal. But we wanna make sure again, we're, we're, not, we're not focusing in on that. We're focusing in on how the mages, the hero's perception changes over the course of the story of, oh, well, they're just homunculus, whatever, to, oh, these, these are creatures, you know? He doesn't have to have, like, his whole, uh, I feel so bad for them kind of arc. But he has to have enough of a, of a change in himself such that when he approaches these, uh, the end of the story, he's gone through a dramatic shift where instead of at the beginning of the story where he's like, Okay, I'm gonna, you know, attack the giant flying bat with a uh, solar blaze, and it's gonna suck the life straight out of Homunculus 1229 over there. He doesn't. He he looks at Homunculus 1229 or whoever is replaced him at that point, and is like, if I use this spell, I gotta kill that guy. And maybe he changes his tactics, right? Uh, we'll put this here at the end, and then we'll call this a night. Uh, this this all needs to be edited. We'll just put this in bold, uh, put this in underline for right now. Changes his tactics to avoid fighting. Uh, avoid fighting the way he used to by sacrificing homunculus just to power or overpower. That's a thought. A spell. So maybe uh, drawing energy tanks for support or using energy tanks to show off. Um, use huge spells for maximum overkill. Yeah, so maybe he's just a little... Uh, uh, just a little wasteful with his stuff as well. You know? It's a thought. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to stop the stop the stream here. I think I finally got uh, some pretty good progress. We started out pretty rocky. Not going to lie. Um, and we, we worked through a lot of pretty interesting good things. I... I'm glad that the story's kind of gotten to the point where it is right now. Uh, I think if we keep it headed this way, uh, at some point we're going to reach a point where uh, we can start actually working on the the uh, the story, and that would be uh, <laughs> that would be quite a miracle. That would be quite a miracle. I kind of I've kind of been uh been digging this song. Um, Let's see. Let's see if I can get it pulled up for everybody. Let's see. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a nice little song that I I found some, some days ago. Kind of cozy. Could be a perfect thing to just uh, just close this out on. Uh, 
let's see, make this a little bit smaller. Hmm, I guess that font's probably not going to get any smaller, so. close enough all right if you've uh if you've been uh tuning in so far i appreciate you coming out uh looks like we got a lot of work done tonight and uh, i feel like i uh after we got off to a little rocky start but uh we, we ended up having a pretty good stream so my name is miles mcnockton uh i've been a uh, uh i've been your host for tonight and i appreciate you coming by <laughs> Uh, I just saw this uh, from uh, Sentient Broccoli. I can already tell there's not enough gratuitous fetish stuff inserted into this story. We can change that in the next <laughs> in the next round. I promise you, we'll we'll make it so that way it's unpublishable. <laughs> uh, but if you've uh, if you uh, stop by, I appreciate you coming out. Uh, it's my first time streaming on YouTube. I'm more used to uh, to doing something on Twitch. Uh, so uh, work out the kinks this time, and maybe next time have something a little bit higher quality. Uh, you can find us Unreal Press Podcast on YouTube. You can also find some of our authors, James Craig, on Twitter. You can also find uh, his story, uh, Undying Emperor, on Royal Road. You can also pick up Ship of Fools, Faceless, uh, and Infinite Money Glitch, which is his newest story. Those are all available on Amazon.com. Uh, we also do, uh, the Unreal Press does a anthology series. So we've done... Most recently, these Llama, Good, Bizarre, and other stories. This is Tales from the Orient. It's an anthology of about 15-ish uh, uh, different authors who all put a lot of time and effort into it. It's a beautiful book. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon.com, help support the podcast, and help us do the things that we really enjoy. If you want to join, uh, there will be a link in the description to join our Discord. And uh, you can just come out and say hi and uh, talk with some of us and learn about uh, learn about writing and Share some of your own. We're happy to uh, to help you grow and help you learn. You can also follow uh, Tookie's Magazine on Substack. He's one of our uh, one of our more popular popular side authors who's been doing uh, some pretty good work. He writes a little gentleman's magazine. We have an upcoming interview with him probably in the second half of March. Uh, I'll be giving an, uh, an interview with him. And so we'll get uh, we'll get a nice one on one, and that will be some good content for the channel. Uh, I can't think of anything else, so I'm gonna play out this uh, this little exit song, and when it's all said and done, uh, we're just gonna close the stream, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. It'll actually play. I wonder if it's actually playing. <laughs>